From year to year, the moon never seems to change. Craters and other formations appear to be permanent now, but the moon didn't always look like this. Thanks to NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, we now have a better look at some of the moon's history. The moon likely started its life as a giant ball of magma formed from the remains of an impact on Earth about four and a half billion years ago. After the hot material collected into a sphere, the magma began to cool, eventually forming a crust on the surface of the moon with the magma just underneath. Around 4.3 billion years ago, a giant impact battered the moon's south pole, forming the South Pole Aitken Basin and sending debris as far as the opposite side of the moon. This impact marked the beginning of a period that would cause large-scale changes to the moon's surface. One by one, more huge collisions shaped the terrain, some forming large basins that would eventually fill in to become the dark-colored patches of the moon, known as Maria. They began as normal craters, but soon started to change due to the size of the impact on the relatively thin crust. Because the moon had not yet fully cooled on the inside, lava began to seep out through the cracks caused by the impacts. The resulting volcanic activity spread lava throughout the craters, gradually filling them in and cooling. Because of the high iron content of the basalt in the rock, the maria reflect less light and therefore appear darker than the surrounding highlands of the moon. Around one billion years ago, volcanic activity ended on the near side of the moon as the last of the large impacts made their mark on the surface. The moon continued to be battered by other impactors, although they were much smaller than the objects that formed the largest basins. Some of the largest, most recent, and best known impacts from this period include the Tycho, Copernicus, and Aristarchus craters, which are unique due to the complex system of rays that stretch out from the impact site. Finally, we arrive at the moon that we see today. Though the surface continues to be affected by impacts, the rate has slowed down drastically to the point where the moon appears unchanging to the human eye, as a permanent record of its own history, and a glimpse of how craters may have formed here on Earth. Zero. All engines running.
Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. I'm uh, at the foot of the ladder. The lamb footbeds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches. I'm going to step off the lamb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Columbia, this is Houston, AOS, over. Houston, Columbia, and I gate over. Roger, the EVA is progressing beautifully. They're setting up the flag now. I guess you're about the only person around that doesn't have TV coverage of the scene. That's all right, I don't mind a bit. They've got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes on the lunar surface. Are you getting a TV picture now, Houston? Neil, yes, we are getting a TV picture. You're in our field of view now. I'd like to evaluate the uh, various paces that a person can traveling on the surface. You do have to be all right. You do have to be uh, rather careful uh, to keep track of where your center of mass is. Sometimes it takes about two or three paces to uh, make sure that uh, you've got your feet underneath you. Roger. 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 Roger.